start working on the front of the face. So this part, this white part here, using yarn A. Um, and there really is no new technique in this part of um, the bunny. So I'm not going to go through the whole thing with you. The thing that I think is probably the most of most interest to you is where to pick up a knit um, um, to begin with. Because you know how to pick up a knit, but if I just show you where and how many, um, we've then just got standard increases, decreases. I don't know if there's even any increases, actually. So decreases and wrap and turn um, stitches, which you're completely familiar with now because we've already done all that through here. So let's just look at the picking up and knitting where you have to do it and how many, and I think that's probably all you'll need for this particular section. Right, we're going to be starting on Bunny's left cheek side. So it's my, it's the right as I'm looking at it, but this is Bunny's left cheek. And we're gonna start up here, which is the um, face front marker. Um, and what we're gonna do, there is my muzzle marker. I'm gonna put six, pick up and knit six stitches in that little section here. And then I'm going to do three until I get down to this centre point here. Then another three going up this side and six between there. So it's not, um, you know, it's not rocket science. You can remember six, three, three, six, but, ooh. <laughs> but let's give that a go. Now, slightly different scenario here in that we are picking up kind of, we're not picking up along the straight top of um, a, a cast off edge like we've done previously, which means um, I personally find this a little bit more tricky um, because there isn't a kind of um, perfectly obvious dead easy place for me to put my needle, which is what I need at all times. So um, if you're anything like me, you might, um, you might need to have one or two goes at this. That's all right, doesn't matter. Nobody's watching over your shoulder. Um, there's plenty of people watching over mine, obviously, but you know, we are where we are. So yet again, this isn't a tremendously big area for me to fill, but it's still, if, if I still found this daunting, I could do my little trick from before, which is half it and then pop another marker in in the middle. And I know then I've only got to fill that particular area with three stitches. So, you know, it might be that that's what I end up doing, depending on how much of a hash I make of it truthfully so shall we just give it a go and see how we get on um my again my tips from before stand in that i will always try and put one stitch in the very edge of each section um just to kind of really nicely anchor it so um in this case i've got to put six stitches in this particular section so i shall put one each end which means i've only got to put four in between there so that's where i'm going with that now, as it happens, kind of on this edge stitch here, I think I have got a reasonable sort of place that I can put my needle. I'm going to just find a, I'll just take that, I'll take that pin out for now. I'm just going to put that to one side. Um, I'm just going to kind of put it through. Where you can, my tip for you is to try and have two strands of knitting or two strands of yarn over your needle because it just sort of seems to make a less holy uh, and more secure stitch I think but that's just me I could be wrong um so white or cream yarn yarn a um just the same as before which is I've just put a little loop over the end and I'm pulling it through and that is to all intents and purposes picked up and knit I always want to say picked up a knit but it's knit Take no notice of me, ever. Right, so I'm now gonna try and do four more stitches in this sort of cinnamon color place before I get to this other end, um, end point down here where I'm gonna definitely put one of my six stitches, okay? So I'm just gonna get, again, go through and completely ignore my own advice, which happens frequently, um, and only go through one strand of knitting there. You might find that there are times when you cannot avoid it and you have only got one strand of yarn across the top of the needle, that's okay. But if there is a, a choice, make it two, if you can. Right, so now two stitches. And I'm just trying to do them reasonably evenly. And don't worry, because they do even up as you work rows. Three stitches. Four stitches. Remember, I'm keeping that edge one as stitch number six because I just always want to do that. Five stitches. 
Okay, they're not brilliantly evenly spaced, but they're not too bad. And my sixth stitch, that's easy to say, is gonna go right in there. You can see I've got two strands of yarn over the top. Now, that's the six stitches in the cinnamon stitch. <laughs> Honestly, no, 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 no. Um, and I'm gonna do the same when I get over to this side. All right, so everything I'm doing over on this bunny's left, my right, I'm gonna be repeating over on bunny's right, my left, all right? So my next um, finish line, if you like, is where my thumb is here, so at the narrowest point of his little muzzle. And I've only gotta put three stitches between where I am now and that center point. So they are going to be quite spaced out and that's unavoidable. But don't worry, it, as I said to you, as you work them, it does even up those, um, it does even up the rows and gaps tend to be kind of eased away. So you don't need to worry about that. So I've now got down to that center point of the muzzle. Now on your um, uh, photographs in your magazine, magazine booklet, the white part, is um, between points X, where this finger is, and XX, where this finger is, all right? X and X, <laughs> X and XX. Can't control my own fingers there. Okay, and we're now going to come up the other side and mirror precisely what we've done. So I've got nine stitches here so far, and I'm gonna do exactly the same the other side. So three in this lovely muzzle part. That's one. Come along a tiny bit, roll that edge out and try and get it in the edge of, of if you can, of the work. Again, you, it's very forgiving this yarn because it is fluffy um, and that will hide a multitude, thankfully. Right, so I've done three there and I'm leaving, I'm, I'm keeping this bit you know, I'm not going close to here, the edge here, because I'm going to use that point as the first of the six that I need to do between those two points, if that makes sense. So I know there's six stitches to be picked up, so I've kind of factored that into my spacing here. I hope that makes sense. I think it probably does to you. Okay, so there's my three into the white section. I'm now gonna do the six on the other side into the cinnamon section. Is it called cinnamon? I don't know, it could just be that I'm drinking cinnamon tea. We just don't know, I'll check that, sorry. Right, so one, two, three, oh, I might have, I might, I'm gonna come back actually, because I, I don't think I've given myself enough room. I've got to do six. Yeah, let me come back and go in there again. I don't know if that's where I came out of, but let's give it another go. One, two, so I've done, sorry, two for this six section, three, four, five and on the very corner and this is the cheek is it cheek marker a uh, thump sorry face marker six okay so you can see i have got now 18 stitches picked up reasonably evenly across the front here which is going to allow me if i spread that out it doesn't look does it like there's 18 stitches there. There are when you start and you're gonna do some decreasing and some short rows and things happening down here. Um, but um, we're ready to go with that. So I think, like I said, that that is probably the trickiest part of this, given that we've gone through um, decreasing and short rows together before. Um, the only difference, and so maybe we will have a little look at the short rows actually. The only difference is that on this section, you are doing short rows backwards and forwards. So you're going to do short rows of on purl and knit side. So actually, yeah, let's have a look at that. Let's have a look at that. So I'm just going to do rows one and two, and we'll have a look at the short row section together. So row one is a purl row. Row two is a decrease row on the knit side, which you can handle quite easily. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to get back to you um, at the beginning of the short row section. Right, so I've done um, rows one and two. So I've done a, a straightforward purl row and then row two was the decrease row. So I've now got 16 st stitches on my needle. Um, and we're now gonna begin the short rows to shape the top of the nose. So um, the other thing that's slightly different is we are actually combining some 
uh, decreases with, with uh, wrap and turn. That makes no odds at all. It doesn't make it any more complicated in any way. So let's just have a look at how we put uh, wrapping and turning on alternate rows together, or, or every row, not alternate rows. Okay, so let's have a go at that. So our first row for our short row is a purl row. And all we're going to be doing is purling nine. And it's a decrease row as well. So we're going to be purling nine and then purling two together. That's the decrease part. Um, I think we've already done a purl two together decrease, but we'll just cover it if you're not sure, which I'm sure you are. Right, so that's nine purl. Now purl two together is very straightforward. I'm just going to put my needle through two stitches and purl them together. So where there were two, there is now one. Okay, and straight away I'm into wrapping and turning on the purl side. Um, so if you recall, my yarn is at the front because I'm purling. I'm going to put it to the back, slip the stitch and bring it to the front again. Slip the stitch back. Don't forget we have got a much more detailed video to show you that if you're struggling. Okay, so there's the wrap. Let's turn. And we are now immediately into a knit decrease. So I'm going to knit three and then knit two together. One, two, three. While I do this, I need you to tell me, explain to me how the heck the designers know what's going to happen when they do <laughs> when they do this. It's like some sort of sorcery, isn't it? So I've knit three, knit two together, and now I'm straight in to, sorry, get that cable out of the way. I'm straight into a wrap and turn on the knit side. So my yarn is at the back because I'm knitting. I'm going to bring it through the needles to the front slip the stitch from the left to the right, put the yarn back around to the back, slip the stitch back onto the left needle, that's the wrap part, and now the turn. Okay, so now we're back on row three, um, and we're gonna purl four stitches and then purl two together. Now the only difference here is that one of the stitches that we're going to purl together is wrapped. So I do want you to pay attention to that. And I've only just realised that, so my apologies. Um, so this is the first wrapped stitch that I've come to, come to, and it's got to be purled together with its neighbour. Now, the temptation is just to purl the two together like that. I'm not sure that the world would spin off its axis if you did do that, but a neater way to get a, um, a neater finish is just exactly as we've done before. On the purl side, you're gonna pick up the wrap from the front. Again, don't forget, I have a longer video to show you that. That becomes one stitch, actually. So if I'm gonna purl two together, I need to pick up those two strands because that is my one stitch. That's my stitch with the wrap. And then I need to purl it together with the next stitch along. So I've actually got three strands going over my uh, needle there. Okay, so I'm purling two together and now I'm going to do my wrap and turn. All right, so I'm, my yarn is at the front. I'm going to put it to the back, pick up my stitch from left to right, bring the yarn back to the front, which has wrapped it, and put the stitch back on the left needle and turn. And we're now going to find ourselves in a similar situation going back over on the knit side, which is to say um, we're going to have a wrap to pick up before we can knit two together. So let's look at what happens on this side. So I've got a knit five. I'm on row, uh, short row four here. One, two, three, four, and five. And you can see just about I've hit a knit a wrapped knit stitch here. Now, slightly different scenario. Do you remember when we pick up the wrap on the knit side, we put it up on the needle just as before, but to make it nice and neat, we knit through the back loop. All right, so our needle goes through the back loop with both strands over, and I'm just gonna extend that because I've got to knit two together. I'm gonna to extend my needle through the back loop of the one along as well. So when I knit those, all of those strands together and it comes off my needle and I give it a little pull it's really neat can you see you can barely see that all right so just give that some attention when you're um, doing your knit two togethers or your purl two togethers make sure you do just be a bit vigilant with those wraps pick them up as you go and it just gives you a lovely neat finish so where am I I've now got a wrap and turn 
So my yarn was at the back, I'm bringing it to the front, slipping my stitch from left to right, putting the yarn back, putting the stitch back. That's the wrap, there's the turn. So same thing again on that uh, short row five, where I'm gonna pick up a wrap and purl two together. So you can rewind and see that, you don't want me wittering on and on. But that's the trickiest bit for this particular section. I'm going to go ahead and finish it all the way up and I will see you for the next section, which is the back of the head. Right, I've completed, um, I don't even know what it is, face front? Yes, face front. Um, I just want to show you, so it's obviously um, fastened off now, but if you look at the side here of, of what will become the little nose, you can see that the direction of the stitches are almost at right angles to the directions of the stitches coming up, up here. And that has been formed by the short row. And you can see coming up the side here where we've picked up the wraps and um, decreased on either side. So nice and neat, not very holy, I think, um, and has shaped that little nose nicely. I think we're gonna kind of ultimately join something like so. Let's have a look at our example. Yes, so we're going to join the, the um, eye sockets up here, but that's not yet. But it just forms that lovely little kind of bridge of the nose that we know and love with bunnies, doesn't it? So um, lots of short row shaping there, not too challenging, I hope. Um, and we're ready now to move on to the back of the head.